Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to the committee for giving me an opportunity to present my works in this meeting. Today, I would like to talk my modified classification to casting classification system of spinivit meningioma. As an introduction, casting and his colleague first classified this group of tumor into four categories on the basis of symptoms, surgical observation, post-mortem examination. The first is simply, we can say, the medial group. And the second is a middle group. And the lateral, actually, these two group, two uh, type of spinangioma is heteronal or lateral, but it is divided into two different groups and plaque peteronal meningioma and globoid peteronal meningioma. Since then, there are many classification available in the literature, such as Bonal et al. in 1980, they divided this group of tumor into three groups. They included either and plaque and globoid tumors. Pahano and Peter in 1986, simply classified this tumor into two groups, medial and lateral spinoid meningioma. Roser et al. in 2005, they make a little bit uh, modification, especially in the medial group. They further divided this medial group into two different subgroups uh, based on the Cavernous sinus invasion. Why this group of tumors should be separated? Because its location has different behavior, different pattern of growth. A medial group, because of their proximity to the important structure, such as the canal, major cerebral vessel, they have higher rate of involving the structures than the lateral groups. So when the tumor originate more laterally, there will be less compression of these important structures. To modify this uh, casting classification, we analyze the presenting symptoms, imaging studies, surgical observation, surgical radicality, and the surgical complication in 20 29 patients with globoid spinoid meningioma that operated between 2000 and 2017. We excluded the spinopetoclyphal and black spinoid meningioma, anterior clinoid meningioma, primary cavernous sinus meningioma, and optic nerve set meningioma. To propose this classification, we redefine the medial group tumor. That tumor arise from one third medial spinoid ridge, represent medial posterior to anterior projecting segment, most adjacent to the anterior clinoid process with and without afrono sinus invasion. Lateral globoid tumors comprise two thirds of spread ridge with lateral margin just close to the peterion. Peterion is peteronal part of the parent fold. Therefore, why we redefine peteronal meningioma as a, as a globoid tumors with hyperorthosis that originate from the peterion spreads to the temporal bone to the superficial temporal region. Therefore, this group of tumor are considered as convexity meningioma. This is the imaging of our cases. This A imaging or MRI 
it is paternal globate tumor in according to the classic classification but our in our modification this group is removed from the spin with meningioma and the b is um, lateral globate tumor in our modified classification it is the same as the middle group in the casting system and you see this is a medial group in this uh, imaging this media group with a sinus invasion and this two below mri is a medial globate tumor without a sinus invasion this is the result of our study our series is a result is presented in the table as you can see that in the venial group they have more a visual impairment they have more uh, ocular paresis because their proximity to the important structures when the tumor originate laterally of course there will be less compression to these structures this is another characteristic of fluid with tumors in our series i think this is the same as other report this wife data is used to support our idea why heteronal group is removed from this classification as you can see that the paternal group has no chest infection has no vascular encasement and the surgical radicality 100 percent was gross total removal therefore in my opinion that group of tumor should be excluded from the spin between meningioma group this post-operative complication also support our idea to remove the paternal group from spin with wing meningioma classification this uh, imaging and surgical observation show us that the paternal group is not scalp based tumor is not spin with wing meningioma it is really convexity meningioma as we can see that after removing all the hyperosotic bone, we can change this skull base to into the uh, convexity meningioma. We do not use any brain retraction to remove this tumor. And at the end of the surgery, you can see that there is no basal encasement, there is no direct compression of the optic nerve. It is very strong evidence to support that the paternal group is not sub spinal with meningioma this is the lateral group in our cast, uh, our modification and this may be the same as a middle group in casting classification this tumor also has hyperostosis and the lateral group also has a possibility to encase the proximal major uh, cerebral vessel as well as minimal compression to the optic nerve this is a medial group this is a very complex tumor it has hyperostosis and extend to the orbit and cumbernus sinus invasion after the removing all the hyperostotic bone we will have very big surgical space very ample surgical space to remove the tumor both in the orbit and the intracranial space as you can see after removing the bone we can remove the uh, tumor in the orbit and then when all the hyperostatic bone almost removed and we can go further to the intracranial tumor and you can see that how easily the tumor is removed and 
the tumor also can be easily separated from this origin with without any brain retraction. In this part, the ACA is strongly attached to the tumor, therefore small remnant tumor was left behind. However, in this um, other major blood vessel, there is a good arrangement space, therefore we can remove the tumor easily without leaving any small remnant tumor in the blood vessel. At the end of surgery, we can also preserve the third nerve. This is the third nerve. At the point, we have to use less cautery to reduce the third nerve paralysis. This is another medial group of uh, spread with meningioma in our series. This is also very complicated uh, tumor because this tumor encase the blood vessel very strongly and almost there is no uh, arrangement space to allow us to remove the tumor easily. As you can see in this part, the tumor strongly attached to the blood vessel and then small renal tumor should be left behind to reduce the vascular injury. However, this tumor can be grossly total removed. The surgery was done two months ago, so they, we don't have any post-operative imaging studies. So we have uh, made three modifications to casting classification system. Number one, maternal globate tumor is removed from this classification because we think it is convexity meningioma because it has 100% gross total removal. Uh, they do not involve the cranial nerve or vessel engagement. They do not involve the scalp structures. And the middle group in our uh, modification is removed and replaced bilateral group comprises two-thirds of lateral without including peterion because we think peteronal, peteronal region is a convexity meningioma. And this, uh, our opinion, is in, in agreement with Pahanu and Bitar at, uh, in 2086. And medial group, uh, in our modification, is divided further into two different groups on the basis of Pavarno sinus invasion. So the medial and lateral glute tumor should be separated. In terms of a clinical presentation, these two group has different uh, clinical presentation. Of course, medial group have higher rate of visual impairment. The medial group also has higher rate of GS inflation and neurovascular involvement. The surgical challenging in medial group is much higher for the neurosurgeon. Of course, the surgical radicality is much less than in the lateral globular tumors. However, the complication rate of the medial is much higher than the lateral group. The medial uh, spheroid meningioma should also be divided further into different subgroup based on the chest inflation. This paraphernal sinus inflation will allow us not be able to prevent to totally remove this tumor. Nakamura et al. in 2006 report that only 14 percent this tumor can be totally removed when there is just cavernous sinus infection. In our series, no gross total removal was achieved 
in the middle in the medial groove when there is a vernus sinus invasion in summary based on clinical presentation imaging studies microsurgical observation and surgical outcome we propose globoid spinoid menu menu spinoid spinoid meningioma to divide into medial and lateral group medial group is divided further into subdivide subdivision based on the cavernous sinus invasion Peterenal globid tumors have two incasing classification was included the complexity meningioma. It is not included a uh, spinal with meningioma. This modified uh, classification should be used as guidance during informed consent and surgical planning. Thank you.